All righty. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Tech Talk for Accountants show. And I'm your host, Andrew Lassis with RightWorks. And with us today, we have Gainer Milky, who is a business strategist and certified business and transformational coach. He's the owner of Charisma Inc., which is a marketing and B2B consulting firm that specializes in services for uh, accountant and tax professionals, a ghostwriter author for multiple books, including Avoiding App a Thief, your step by step guide to winning more sales and customer advocates in the accounting channel, the Bank Your Brain Blueprint, and the Marketing Ownership Method, which are available on Amazon. And quick note before we jump into it that the Right Now Conference is in Austin, Texas later this year in. May 24th when we're recording this. So be sure to check that out because someone awesome like me <laughs> will be speaking there as well as, I mean, if you know who like Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, like he's also there, but I'm sure more people are like excited for, for my speech there <laughs> than him. So side plug aside, Gainer, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Andrew, for having me. And I don't know if I can beat you either so i'm i'm excited about you being at rightworks conference okay. yeah yeah it's like oh you guys are putting together speakers for that like am yeah. i part of that like do i have to like audition <laughs> what <laughs> did you Is what's the like barrier to entry no they were like they're like you you know about wisps right yeah you got a wisp session all that, right that was that was the barrier to entry this year that's awesome. Well, yeah, mostly mostly internal and, and the external, but it's going to be an awesome show, Austin, Texas. I want to say it's like May, you said May 14, 20th. something sure. around there, mid-May. I, I should know it, but anyway, so Gaynor, while we're getting that information, tell us about your background and mm -hmm. what led you to like marketing and the accounting niche. Oh, well, it's kind of a pretty straight path. I was always interested in business and marketing in particular, and sort of got my first taste of fintech when I worked at an agency. And then I had the good fortune when I moved to the States from Canada to work at Thomson Reuters. So I got into the tax and accounting space there and never really left and just discovered how much I loved working with accounting firms. And you know, fun fact was I actually worked with Darren Root on Rootworks when that was first starting. So I got to know a lot about accounting firms through that process and went out on my own, started Charisma Inc., the agency about 12 years ago and been working in the accounting space ever since. It's really cool. And yeah, so Darren Root now rebranded to RightWorks Academy. You know, we're, we're all, right. RightWorks is just taking over the mm -hmm. the space. They'll, they'll probably say something to you, be like, hey, do you know how to, <laughs> yeah. how to get, get people in the door? So with an expertise in marketing, what are some of the biggest blind spots that you see that firms have in their marketing? Well, I think one, I... Accounting firms typically don't think about their end client when they're you know, trying to attract clients. They're thinking about all the services that they can provide when they should really be thinking about what the benefits of those services are beyond just, you know, we'll do your books, keep them clean, or, you know, we get your taxes done. It's those things are important, but that's the tactical side. It's what are those business outcomes that you can help your clients achieve. And, you know, uh, tax planning is a perfect example. It's, you know, saving people money, but it's also giving them, you know, opportunities to think bigger about their business and you know, what they should be doing with it, whether they need to change their entity, if they could afford to add staff, which means that they could grow. You know, all of those things that accounting professionals do so well that are really meaningful to small business often is not mentioned or even like the thought process, you know, in their marketing. So that's number one blind spot. And uh, I would say number two is just doing it, having a plan and executing regularly, because you know, once you have a system in place, if you're consistent, 
you know, that actually beats, you know, the always looking for the latest and greatest, whether it's, you know, the latest social media platform. Once you find where your audience is and you're consistently telling them and engaging with them and, and providing some, you know, helpful advice to them, that's probably the best marketing that you can do. Yet a lot of firms, you know, they tend to be a little hot and cold on marketing, which makes it less effective over the long run. And actually, this show is a perfect example where I had seen your name CC'd on, I mean, probably like four or five previous guests on the show where you're attached to it. Charisma Inc. is attached to the person that we're speaking to. And, and so that's sort of like what initiated even my reach out. It's like, you're the most famous person that I don't know. <laughs> who, yeah. Who, who, who is this gainer? And, you know, it's like, it's a unique name. So it's not like, you know, if it's like Jessica Smith and it's like, a, maybe a coincidence kind of deal and Charisma Inc. It's like, okay, so what's the connection here? So the consistency part and seeing your name frequently if it was just the first time that I saw it, whenever it was, call it maybe 18 months, two years ago, it was just a name CC'd on an email one time. Okay. But you see, you see someone appear multiple times in multiple places. And I'm sure we probably spoke at the same, you were at Bridging the Gap. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. So like, you know, things, things like that, where it's like, okay, I keep seeing this person over and over, or keep seeing that brand over and over. And so building that, it's not something that's just an overnight thing. It's not, well, I put one post on LinkedIn one time and now I got 17 clients from it and my marketing is perfect. And the other thing that you said that I really, really double down on is the latest, greatest, sexiest, newest, like majority of our lead nurturing, again, seeing our name over and over is done through email, which is like the oldest form of digital marketing, like mm -hmm. email and Google pay-per-click, like nothing sexy, new, like, oh, I do this thing. You got to check out. It's like, yeah, emails like we've, we're, we're familiar, <laughs> you know, but it's over time and we've seen the results. And it's not just we sent one email one time, look at all this great stuff, but you send content that people are interested in, help them out on a lot over time, and then you build that relationship. And so what are some of the things, I mean, I have my own opinions on like B2B marketing. And so what are some of the, I feel like the awareness being in front of them sort of mm -hmm. plays into this, but so we're talking B2B marketing. So maybe not the the 1040 clients, right? But the yes. bigger if clients. Get more advisory or those like business clients that you, know, you can have that, whether it's a family office relationship with, or you know, you're doing their taxes and doing advisory with that. I mean, the biggest thing is relationship building. And, you know, that's where going, going to some conferences where your audience goes and I can't stress that enough. It's like people think, you know, oh, I'll just like go to my local chamber of commerce or, or something like that. And it's like, no, find their associations. If you have a niche, so if you have a niche in dental, if you have a niche, you know, with associations, if you have a niche, you know, name, name your niche, there is a, probably an association or some kind of group where they all gather to get education or, you know, might be discounts. It could even be like a marketing association or something like that. So you can become sort of the resident expert and it's no different than you and I going to accounting conferences, right? I mean, I go to accounting conferences because that's where my niche people are and I want to both learn about what the pain points are for them so that I can help them more and then also meet more of them right from a marketing perspective and you don't have to necessarily do boots on the ground there's a lot of virtual events that you can go to find some groups on LinkedIn but I think there's a you know another blind spot that people run into is that bigger is better 
in marketing, it's like, oh, I need to touch so many people. Well, I mean, most accounting firms can get a decent number of leads by being very focused and very consistent with a smaller pool of people. So you're just wasting money by trying to reach everybody when you could be very focused. And if you had you know, 10 or 12 solid leads a week coming in, whether that's from your website or you're doing some speaking or you do a webinar for a group or something like that, or even just put a great piece of content out that people can download and then you promote it on social media or through Google. I mean, you can build a great practice just on that. And then there's the whole side of, you know, once you do good work for people, you should also share that and you can get referrals that way. Reviews are another thing that a lot of people don't ask for in B2B. So it's you know, really making sure that you have a process down where you can get reviews and it doesn't have to be Google reviews, even though those are great. Ask your clients you know, periodically if they would give you, you know, a review on LinkedIn or even just you know, give them some questions that they can answer and you can use those as sort of like sound bites in your marketing. So I think those are some things that aren't expensive and they're also not going to be terribly time consuming. You just need to do them consistently. Yeah. And I think the doing them part and the consistency part mm -hmm. are two of the things, like you said, people, I think a lot of times, especially with the smaller firms, it's like, well, I go to the chamber, people in the chamber know me and I get a couple deals from the chamber. Therefore, my marketing is go to the chamber because my client is everybody. And it's like, okay, yeah. But if you really dig into it, and here's actually a great example. I, I do like business coaching on the side with some friends, more just a here, let me help you certifications, blah, blah, blah. But the one of them's a handyman. And he's like, yeah, I'm joining all these different BNI groups because every BNI group that I join, I get connected with the mortgage broker and the realtor. And, you know, that's great. So I'm going into all these BNI groups. And, you know, getting to know the mortgage broker and the realtor, I'm like, why don't you go to mortgage broker and realtor associations? If those are like your great ones, yeah. like where there's hundreds, thousands, at least dozens of mm -hmm. exactly who you want to talk to instead of, yeah, I joined this group and I spend hours going to it. They already have a guy, but maybe I'll work my way in, mm -hmm. you know, like, I mean, in this just doing the math and if you, if you say it out loud, it doesn't make sense, but if you practice, it makes a lot of sense. So for us in IT, remote IT, our total addressable market, even if we kind of niche it down, say it's about 300 million Americans. Mm -hmm. Like we also can do every, anywhere that speaks English or Spanish, we could mm -hmm. actually do, but just 300 million Americans be our total addressable market. We're also competing though with almost 500,000 other remote IT companies. Mm -hmm. So there's only, and all of us are trying to get everybody. So how we differentiate ourselves and everyone's got, oh, like we, we make your tech better so you can focus on growing your business, right? And I see that a lot with accounting firms. Or, oh, well, we'll make sure that you pay the lowest amount in taxes possible. Like, cool. That's what I would expect you to be doing. Like we, we pride yeah. ourselves on customer service, like for the consumer, that should be a given, right? Right. Like that's not different. Like the guy down the street said he could do the same thing. Like what's, what's different here? Oh, well, I'm the best. Like I've seen his work. It's not good. Okay. But I don't know that as a consumer. However, we draw the line and say in tech for accountants. Okay. Yeah. No dentist is interested anymore. Right. So we yeah. have just gotten rid of every single dentist, every single lawyer, every single mom and pop shop mm -hmm. down the street. Everybody has a hard hardware store. Like everybody else is no longer interested. We just got rid of 299,900,000 opportunities. And our total addressable market is about 100,000 firms. Mm. We got rid of all of those opportunities and only have a hundred thousand. 
Now, flip side, what if you had 100,000 clients? Would that be enough? Like, yes, okay. But it's about repeating yourself over and over and over to that same 100,000. If you think about some of your first clients, they're probably people that already knew you. So most people have like 150 people-ish in their direct network of people that they know. And so those 150, it's not a coincidence Right. that they are your clients they know like and trust you and on in a in an industry that's built on on trust equity where people don't exactly know what makes a good accountant what makes a good bookkeeper that there's a difference between someone that does taxes and bookkeeping and that there are people that do audit and if you're focusing on tax compliance it's different and so understanding your people it helps you rise above everybody else. And so we don't say, well, we'll focus on the tech so you can focus on growing your company, but we're helping with compliance with IRS cybersecurity requirements. And that's different than everybody else. There's like five of us and RightWorks acquired us. So now there's four of us. <laughs> and I think just honing in on a couple of things you said, one is the trust equity. And I mean, accountants, have that in spades. And so I think talking not only about you know, areas of expertise, but areas of expertise that are specific to your niche, you know, in any type of content, or if you, you know, do some kind of webinars or things like that, that's really important because we can find that broad information about you know, what you should be doing for your small business accounting anywhere. It's when you start you know, niching down into specifics and it could be specifics both in like the services that you provide because we see that too it's you know, for like home health care accountants so accountants that only deal with home health care agencies they're doing cost reporting so that's something that's very unique to home health agencies and you know if you can develop content and be known as like the firm that you know, does cost reporting and that's where you want to go you know once you get you know maybe two to three to four clients they'll go and tell their colleagues right like oh that's where you get your cost reporting accounting done and it's amazing and you never have to worry about it and it's all done on time and the people are awesome and they deliver great service but if you tried to go, I mean, it's the same with wineries. Wineries are also a very specialized type of accounting and you know, tax. And so if you're known for being the best in you know, a certain niche, that's pretty easy to build a book of business around. And you know, people, I think, also get a little freaked out. Like what you were saying is you know, really narrowing down the total addressable market into something smaller. But that's, you know, the riches are in the niches because otherwise you're spending more money to try to reach people and sort of meet their needs in a custom way. And that's not cost effective either. So I think one of the big takeaways from our you know talk right now is if you haven't already got two to three niches, really you know, make that a goal this year to do that and then start finding out where those people live so that you can start showing up there and just do it consistently with some helpful information. And those would be three things that you could do. And I think it would help people really grow like their firm this year. And it, not even just say you have that specialized one little thing that mm -hmm. you do that everyone knows you for. Like literally earlier today, someone came to me and said, there's another IT company that did the WISP. Can you check it for me? Right? Like, I'm not going to get their business as their full IT managed service company. That's fine. But they came to me about one very, very, very specific thing that mm -hmm. we are uniquely positioned as literally the experts, like when, when RightWorks was doing the acquisition, they were saying, you know, we're interested in having offering WISP to our clients. And the guy was sort of spearheading it. He was like, yeah, I was looking for other companies that do it. And Andrew's name is just like the top 10 results on Google. And then there was one article that wasn't about him. 
But then I saw that he was cited in that yeah. article. So, so, you know, and it's not an overnight thing. It's not just, well, Andrew said wisp and then blah, blah, blah. He's, he's all the results and tech for accountants is well known for it, but over time, over and over and over showing up for it over and over and over in that one very specific thing and risen to the top as opposed to, oh, they're so good at IT managed services. Like, I'm curious, I'm just kind of going off an unscripted thing. Can you name like a big non-niched managed IT company? No. There's 500,000 of them. Can you name like a big one? No. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Like if I said name a fast food chain, you could rattle off a bunch of them, right? But there's there's so many and nobody stands out. But like in our acquisition, like you'd probably heard of tech for accountants before and heard of right networks before because it's a small world. And, right. you know, we're following basically what you had said, show up where your audience is. So we don't yeah. go to tech conferences to talk about tech and, oh, here's the latest cloud blah, blah, blah. But we're at accounting conferences talking about tech specifically for accounting firms. So, I mean, it's gosh. And then you get into the financial part of it. And like last year we had our biggest year ever in 10 years with our best profit margins. So profit alone also better, but our margins were better than ever as well. And so just think, sheer coincidence, or it really speaks to you get momentum and it grows on top of each other. And then more clients is more referrals. Right. And, you know, just it builds on itself, kind of that snowball effect. I would also say, you know, one other thing that we haven't talked about when you're attacking a niche like that is to make it really easy for people to understand how they can benefit by doing business with you. Like, for example, the WISP is the perfect, you know, kind of idea in your space because it's, oh, I know I need that. And they've got the solution. We already know it's like perfect. It, you know, checks all the boxes for what I need for compliance and security. I'm going to go there. I think people in accounting firms need to do the same thing, right? If you're doing dental accounting, for example, it's, You've got to break down in your head the services that you provide through the eyes of the dental market and what is it that their pain points are, how do you fix them, and then give them that checklist. It's the same thing. And so really packaging your services that way is the other piece because if you know somebody needs to stop and spend a minute to figure out exactly how you can help them, then your marketing isn't sharp enough, right? It's, you know, you haven't educated them on how you can help them and they don't understand that you specialize in what you do. So, you know, give it people, you know, it's distraction culture. People have about like 10 seconds to figure out if you can help them or not. So you need to make it crystal clear with you know, one word that, you are always associated with or you know one phrase or one thing because people don't have time or the attention span these days to figure anything else out beyond that and it's right and you know it also helps separate because when when people are confused and don't know about well i don't know how to choose a good accountant so they just blanket they're all the same and then probably just go, well, I mean, I could pay less for this one that does the same thing. Well, you say that you're better, but how are you better? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, I'm better because I'm better and I know more than you and you should trust me. It's like, well, I don't know you though. And that guy costs less. And they say that they're better. Right. So it becomes a race to the bottom. And then super different conversation, but you could check out Darren Root stuff for more on like AI and automating processes and help bridging the gap of talent that's coming in and the amount of talent that's leaving and the demand for all of the all the accounting services. So like there is that going forward where there's a high demand. So 
how you can differentiate yourself. And I mean, niching is one way. I mean, that's, that's obviously one that like both of us, you know, we're both here like on an accountant podcast and neither of us are accountants. So like, it obviously speaks to like how we conduct ourselves. But I mean, the truth of the matter is if it didn't work, nobody would do it. Right. And I, I would also say, you know, there's, you know, a few different ways, obviously, to grow your firm through marketing. Yes, the niching is is a piece of it. You know, if you're going for just you know, volume business, there's you know, being able to scale and provide a really simple solution to a larger market. I mean, that's why I know we said we weren't going to talk about 1040 business too much, but you know, there are firms that are still solid on 1040. And you know, for them, it's all about being able to, I think, get referrals from you know, other customers. And so that's you know, a very important thing. And then also mastering some of the digital you know, advertising, Google ads, and things like that. And then being able to bring in tools to help them with AI, just like what you said. I mean, we're seeing all kinds of solution providers popping up with AI tools that can really help that tax process. So for people who you know are still wanting to build that volume-based tax practice, I think it actually can also become about how do you attract the right talent to? And that's an area of marketing that a lot of firms never really weighed into, yet they have trouble attracting staff. So that internal branding and communication can be just as important too. And so since obviously a lot of people struggle with all these things and, you know, it's like, well, I know how to do the tax work, books, CAS, all these things, like I'm really good at helping my clients, but marketing is not something that I can invest all of my time and energy into learning as well as being good at my craft. So like Gainer, I'm curious, like, are there, are there like companies that help people with their marketing? <laughs> there are. I mean, we, you know, I will say if you are going to try to attract large volumes of business through Google ads, I mean, that is something that you really need a specialized firm for because that. You know, you've got to do a lot of testing with those ads. You've got to like keep them current. You've got to make sure that, you know, your spend is appropriate for the amount of work that you're getting in that way. It's top, not like top of my list for firms that are trying to go more the advisory route, but definitely there's you know benefits to having a third party, you know, help you. Sometimes, I mean, for us, one of the biggest pieces that we help firms with is just what, what they should be doing and what they should not be doing. So it's that planning, because once you have the plan and the structure in place, it should be pretty turnkey. You shouldn't have to be reinventing the wheel, you know, every month. And if you are, then maybe you're changing your focus too often. But as you said before, once we have building blocks, it's about repetition. And so you know, there's a third party approach. You can also, you know, hire marketing students. You know, they're not a bad option as as well if you've got somebody to kind of guide them, which is something that you know, we do. But there's a lot of providers out there who can work with like an internal team and and just point you in the right direction so that you're not spending more money than you really need to to be winning new clients. And we also like one area that we work a lot in is that bank your brain blueprint for accountants where we're helping them monetize their expertise really by sharing it with the audiences that matter to them and that's something that you know anybody can do in this space it's and you don't have to you know be a speaker to have an impact and win more clients you know it could be as easy as coming on a podcast that your audience listens to or writing you know more blogs or posting relevant content on LinkedIn. You just need to think about what expertise do you have that could be helpful and start kind of breadcrumbing that in the areas where your audience is. So it's, you know, 
if people wanted to take anything away today, it's really know who your audience is, know where they get information from that's relevant to their business, and then go there and try to offer you know, some help, make connections. And I think you'll you know start to see that flywheel turning when it comes to referrals as well. Yeah, absolutely. So Gaynor, I want to be conscious of your time. So thank you so much for being on the show. It was great just having a conversation with you and, you know, getting to dig into the tactics and strategies that, and it's not only just accountants, but really like any service-based industry that's built on trust equity, I think can really benefit from a lot of these strategies and being able to, you know, make more money, basically, you know, no one went into business to be broke. So like, being able to bank all that and being able to help your clients more because you're specialized and actually better than everyone else that you're competing with. So just one final plug, the right now conference is May 14th through 16th in Austin, Texas. There will be amazing speakers like the aforementioned Darren Root. I'll kind of be there too. And Kevin Leary, Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank. But that aside, Gainer, where can people find out more about you? At Charisma Inc, I N K at the end dot com. And then I'm on LinkedIn. So I'm always happy to connect with people. And you can find my email on the website too. Awesome. Well, thanks again for listening to the show. If you enjoyed it, please like it. If you loved it, be sure to subscribe. And Gaynor, thank you so much for being on the show. It was great talking to you. Thank you, Andrew. It's a pleasure.